We're here at the Open Government Partnership Annual Meeting with Rufus Pollock, the co-founder of the Open Knowledge Foundation. Did I get that right? You did. You got that right. And how long has the Open Knowledge Foundation been around now? We've been around for eight years. We were founded in 2004. And what's your involvement with the Open Government Partnership? So we're one of the civil society organizations. I mean, on the, on the, uh, at the same time, I personally uh, sit on the Transparency Board, which advises the UK government. So I, I could have a slight aspect where I'm here as part of the, the UK delegation. But the main reason I'm here is the Open Knowledge Foundation is a civil society organization. The OGP has a load of civil society organization kind of members or participants. Mm -hmm. And we're one of them because we are very interested in open data and open government data. And uh, what exactly is the role of civil society in the Open Government Partnership? How much are you actually going to hold them accountable to what they're saying they're doing? I think one there is. A, I think there's a positive aspect to people just being here, in the sense of just the interaction with officials. And even even if sometimes it's lip service, you know, I think there's always that risk. And just the very fact it's said and that there should be engagement is, is a power, powerful thing. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, I think the question of, of holding accountable, I mean, it's a deeper question. So just having people here doesn't make accountability. Accountability actually happens on the ground back in countries. Mm -hmm. It happens when we see action plans which get announced here. What will happen in two years? What happens when it's difficult? What happens when a government official actually gets sent to jail, for example, because of something that mm -hmm. gets released? That, I think, will be the true test. And it will be a test of, in a sense, I don't think it will be specific to the open government partnership, it will be, it's, it's a standard test, you know, is the media strong, is the society strong, etc. Um, so there's, uh, there's an awful lot of energy this year about open data, and uh, there's been some pretty good research and writing about the differences between open data and open government as you think about it classically. Sure. Uh, can you talk about where the two intersect and where they don't? Sure. I mean, I remember two years ago, in fact, uh, a civil servant in the UK coming up to visit me in Cambridge to talk about Gov 2.0, mm. uh, which, I don't know, open government has perhaps come similar to Gov 2.0, maybe it's a little bit different. But I confessed myself then even a little confused about what Gov 2.0 mm. meant exactly. And I think, I think open government is a great sounding term. I'm not always clear exactly what it means. Mm -hmm. I think open government data is a very specific definition. It's mm. government data that's open and in particular the government releasing mm. lots and lots of its data that isn't hasn't, you know, isn't personal, isn't your health records, whatever, but it, it, data that can release, making that available freely and openly to everybody, um, to developers, to citizens, and so on. That's very concrete and very clear. And I think the general rationale about that um, is pretty clear, which is, you know, we think businesses will get built, we think people will build tools, services, applications that make your life better, you know. How do you get to work? Is, there, is your bus coming? Mm -hmm. um, where did your money go, etc. I think that rationale is, is fairly clear, and that, you know, there could be debate about how much of that will happen. I think we have some good evidence that that is happening. Mm -hmm. I think open government is a much more intriguing, but therefore also problematic concept. Um, because what I mean, yeah, I think in its key sense often means better governance. It means more participatory governance. Um, it means better accountability. Um, you know, so I think that classic transparency and accountability. You know, it wouldn't be very useful to know that your government was incredibly corrupt, but be able to do nothing about it, or to know that money was being wasted and for nothing to change the result. Mm -hmm. In fact, it would be rather disheartening. So I think the challenge of, you know, that I think we see around open government is that is a much trickier proposition. It's a more exciting one, at least from a governance or often civil society perspective. But whereas open government data, we can kind of see government's going to do it, they can make some rule, it can happen, and we can see it used. Holding governments to account as a result of that requires many other things. It requires a strong civil society, a good media, um, a way for that you know, people to solve sometimes collective action problems. You know, mm -hmm. we can see many decisions in history, uh, even of very democratic governments, that turn out to have been wrong in retrospect, or mistaken, or taken for biased reasons. Um, I think we can. Many people would now think, for example, the Iraq War was mistaken. There was quite a lot of information that was available. So I think it's clear that, to put it in the crudest sense, data does not necessarily equal analysis, and analysis does not equal action or change. Each of those stages requires other contributions. So open data, sure, that means we now have access to data, but then maybe we need to analyze it. But to go from analysis to action and change is a different ball game. It's perhaps a necessary condition, but by no means sufficient. Now, the Open Knowledge Foundation has been uh, a proponent, a supporter of, an educator about open data now Indeed. since your inception. Yeah. Um, if people want to learn more about it uh, yeah. in terms of the foundation and your work on it, where should they go online? Well, they should go to the Open Knowledge Foundation's website, okfn.org. If they want to know what open data is, they should visit opendefinition.org, which gives a very succinct definition. The other thing is if you're a government or someone else just wanting to know what the heck is this open uh, data stuff and why might it be relevant for me, uh, check out opendatahandbook.org, which is a great, simple, short introduction saying what open data is, why it might be important, and how to go about doing it. All right, brilliant. Rufus Pollock, thank you so much. Thank you.